Hey guys, Space Marine 658 here, and today I'm going to bring you an episode on the enhanced input system. Um, so today we're going to talk about actually converting to access mapping in the new system. Um, in the previous system, it was pretty simple. Um, you would add a event. So let me actually show you what it is originally. Um, so in your project settings originally, you would go into input um, and you would actually plug in an access mapping here, um, and that would actually um, allow you to set that key binding up in your graph. Uh, but now with the new enhancement system, the old system is eventually going to be deprecated and probably removed at some point in the future. Um, so let's talk about how to add access mappings in the new version. Um, so the first thing you want to do is you want to actually create the input action. Um, so for example, here I have yaw ship. That's just, a, for example, it's just an access 1D. Um, so that'll go from negative one to one. Um, you can put modifiers and stuff to change that if you'd like, uh, but for my example, that's pretty much all you need to do. Um, and then over here in my context, so once you've created this input action, you need to create an input context. This input context is what stores all the input actions for a given context. Um, so for example, if you're piloting a ship, you'll have one context. You can use that same context for a different vehicle, let's say. Um, like on foot but it's recommended that you switch contexts that way you can have different key bindings for different things um, and also it allows your players to re key bind based on context and then you could show them you know here is the context when you're piloting a ship um, here is the context when you're walking on the foot um, and that's really handy for players to be able to change because for some players they may want to use different controls for different things um, depending on what they're doing so let's go in our context, which both of these can be created just by going down to input and then you've got your mapping context and then your actual action. And then in here, um, so you saw we had the input action in your ship. You just hit the plus on the mappings um, and that'll add that here. And then you add your keys that you want to use. So you'll add two keys um, plus if you have other key banks. So for here, I have gamepad, left thumbstick, right, um, left thumbstick, left. And then what you're going to want to do is in here, all you got to do is add a single modifier for the one that is the opposite direction. So for yaw, one is to the right, negative one is to the left. So for my negative one, which is A, I want to negate the value. So as you're pressing down A, instead of going up to one, it's going to go to negative one. And of course, I've added these as mappable. Uh, that way, I, later on, I can allow players to rebind the keys settings if needed. So once you've got that all set up, then it's as simple as coming in here. And you'll want to, every triggered, you want to set the pitch input to the action value. Um, so you'll just right click here and type in. I. Uh, it depends on what you name your action. So I name my actions all IA underscore. That way they're really easy to find. And I did, you know, y'all ship, pitch ship, roll ship. These are all axis map. Um, so for example, with this pitch chip, um, I put it into a value pitched input. And then when it's completed, I set it to zero because um, we're no longer pitching. Um, so what then happens is this gets fed into those variables get fed into my actual setting my pit, pitch rotation. Um, you might have a simpler, you might have a more complex way to do this. But essentially you use those inputs so that what happens is these get triggered and updated and these get done every time you're pressing hold the key and this check pitch you want to do that on event tip. now i think you can also do this on um, a timer if you would like it's more performant that way the problem is depending on your game it may be less smooth um, so for my game because of the way the rotation kind of carries through i have some momentum in the rotation on the ship um, because of that momentum rotation if you don't check it every frame, it gets very stuttery and jaggy. Like the, the rotation looks like it's like struggling to complete. Um, so I have it check every frame. Um, it's not necessarily the most performant, but it works. As you can see here, each one of the axis mappings has a check. So you have check pitch, check roll, check yaw, update thrust, update translate X, update translate Y. Um, Cause for our translate, I'm actually using a two axis mapping, which I'll show here in a second. Um, so this is really handy. This is something I could have done with the pitch roll and y'all by doing a free axis mapping, but it was quite complex and I still am sort of learning the system. 
but I was able to figure out how to get a dual axis map in here. Um, so what happens is you you it, it returns an action value that's actually a blue value. Um, let me actually show that here. So go X, break point Y, recombine struct pin. This is what you'll see originally. So when you create a two axis mapping, uh, so let's go to translate here. It's just an input action, just like any other. See how I have four keys? Because I have two different axes. I have up, down, left, and right. And these are mapped to different keys. So this one right here is the L key. So there's no modifiers because this is just going straight to the right. I have the J key, which has the modifier negate because this is going to the left. I have the I key, which I want to add the swizzle input axis values. What this does is this makes it so that um, the system understands that this is because of dual axis mapping, this is not on default axis, this is on the next axis. And you can change that by going in here and there's a bunch of different axes you can set it to. Um, but essentially, I is going up, so of course it's just that swizzle input. But then for K, we have not just the swizzle input, but then we negate that swizzle input. Um, that way we're getting the downward vector. So all of that gets returned here as an action value 2D vector structure. So you split that, then you get your X value, which goes into your X input, and your Y value, which goes into your Y input. And those are then fed into, just like with the other one, fed into the values that you look at here in your translate left and right, depending on how you're calculating those. Um, and then of course, when completed, you want to set those both to zero, just like with the other one. That way it all goes down to zero. So yeah, so that is pretty much how to convert to axis mappings. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them down below, but I can show you here. This is it all working in the actual game itself. Let's give it a little load here. Got a lot loading, so sometimes it'll take a second. All right. So as we can see, if I use the translate buttons, you got, oh, shaders will be right there. Okay, you got up, you got down, you got left, you got right. Fires. Sometimes I need to adjust the scale. I've got some, uh, those particle systems run on a box. So sometimes if you're a little too far away, they don't pick it up. All right. As you can see, those do that. And then you also have the yaw up, down, left, right. And of course, the input thrust first thrust but yeah there we go um so yeah that's the very simple way to get access mapping in the new system um it was a little bit different from the way it was done in the old system so i wanted to make a tutorial out of it but if you have any other questions or want to see any other kind of tutorial make sure to leave them down below uh, my plan for the next video is to actually do a, another comparison of the large world coordinate system. Now that's on by default 5.1, I want to test um, just the default system out of the box, compare it to the old system, see if they've made any uh, performance improvements um, versus not just. So I want to compare 5.0, the original, um, without large world coordinates, 5.0 with large world coordinates, 5.1 with large world co coordinates. And then 5.1 with large world coordinates and rebasing, um, which will actually improve performance, hopefully even more, because what that'll do is you set rebasing so that every so often it resets the um, default world origin. Um, so what that does is it, it basically cleans up the numbers a bit and makes hopefully the performance a little better. Um, so, yeah, that is basically um, my plan for the next video. Otherwise, good luck. Good hunting.